So welcome everybody. And I wanna thank you for joining us. And we're glad to be here to share information about our school. And we have a no number of people who are going to be, be presenting this evening and I will be introducing them in order. So school staff, thank you very much for all of those people taking their time to be with us this evening. We're very proud of our school and we believe in working as a team, parents included. And our goal is to have a caring environment where all the children feel safe, especially the very young children. We want everyone to feel safe, but especially the preschool and kindergarten children coming in. And of course, as far as uh, being safe and feeling like you belong, that's for the staff, students, and parents. And our goal really is that every student and family will uh, feel supported, feel good about the school. And our focus really is on the education of the children and caring for them. I wanna mention, in addition to the core subjects, we have lots of special programs to offer the children. So we have art and Spanish, gifted and talented enrichment, of course, PE and music, social work or mental health services, as well as Title I and special ed services and technology integration. So we do truly teach the whole child and we do that in a wholehearted way. So thank you again for participating this evening. As I said, we'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. And also we are recording this this evening and you can share that with others to come listen or you can go back and listen for yourselves. And uh, the recording will be posted on the website along with many of the documents related to Kindergarten Information Night. So before I move on too quickly, I'm Phil Gerbata, the principal. I'm supposed to say that at the start. I just thought of that now. And we're going to get started. And our first presenters are school secretaries. And that's we'll start with Dawn Hofstad. Hi, everyone. Um, we are going to talk about a lot of different things today. So you can go to our school website to find different handouts. Um, you can either go to the website and then um, across the top, there's a drop down menu bar. You can select the early childhood center and then from there, click on kindergarten. Um, otherwise, you can go to the direct link, which is royaltonpublicschools.org slash kindergarten. All the parent handouts will be there. Um, enrollment forms are there just in case you misplace anything. And then um, the letter that was sent out has my phone number on there. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to give us a call. And then February 22nd, we will do a registration collection night. So you can come to the Early Childhood Center from 6 to 7.30 on February 22nd. And you can just turn in your packets. If you need copies of birth certificates, you can bring that with. We'll make those copies that night. And we should have everything that we would need then. Again, if you have any questions, give us a call. You need anything else, we can um, get extra copies sent out to you or whatnot. And then Christy. Oh, just a second, just a second. I just wanted to mention, uh, Don and I work very uh, well together. It's just like, uh, you know, I'm kind of, hyperbole a little bit, president, vice president, but I keep her informed. She keeps me informed. And if you ever need any help or any support, feel free to call Dawn and she'll get you directed in the way you need to be directed. And uh, she's a real uh, smart go-getter kind of person. So you can really depend on her. And I want to introduce our attendance secretary, which is Christy Haslin. This is her first year. and. Uh, She's really learned and doing just great. So, all right. Hi, everyone. My name's Christy. The kids call me Miss Christy, and I am the Royalton Elementary Attendance Secretary. So, I'm the one you'll get to call on a daily basis if you don't send a note with your child. We ask that you call the attendance line, which is in, the, I believe, the handouts that you received from Don, possibly. It's also on the web page. I won't give it to you tonight because I don't, anybody's going to write it down. But I'm the one that you would call to let me know if your child's gonna be late or absent, or if you're taking a vacation in advance, I can put that out into the system so teachers always know where your child is. Um, we do ask that you call between 7.30 and 8 a.m. prior to the start of day, which is at 8.25 if your child is not 
to the building by 825, we ask that you come into the south vestibule, but that would pertain to you because you'll be at the ECC building. So you'd go in there to check your child in if they are a little late. I think that's about all I have. I, like Dr. Gabata said, I was recently hired in October. So I'm still learning families, but I'm getting there. So I look forward to meeting everybody on February 2nd with Don when we collect your paperwork. So thank you, Christy. We're very happy to have you with us. We're going to move right now to the kindergarten teachers and they're going to uh, sh share some slides with you. Uh, Nikki Seguin and Cassie Larson, our other kindergarten teacher, Tammy Shaughnessy is on maternity leave. So Nikki and Cassie are going to be doing the work tonight. So go ahead. Okay, hi, I'm uh, Mrs. Seguin. I tried <laughs> to get, um, I have three boys and I tried to get um, them all upstairs, but this one escaped. So he's the middle. Um, I have been um, teaching kindergarten for eight years total. Um, this is my sixth year in Royalton. And um, my oldest is actually in kindergarten right now. Um, he is in, oh, seriously, sorry. <laughs> He's in uh, Mr. Uh, Shaughnessy's class and she is our teacher on maternity leave. So um, Silas is really excited to be back um, in school learning. So Cassie, why don't you go ahead? I'm gonna move him before our presentation. <laughs> yep. Um, so my name is um, Cassie Larson, and yeah, they just call me Miss Larson. It is my second year here, third year teaching. I taught a year at um, Onamia, teaching second grade, and then I came here last year, and it's my second year, so it's going good. I don't have any little monkeys, but I do have a goddaughter who's just about two, so she keeps me on my toes, and yeah, but that's just a little bit about me, and Nikki will start off the presentation. Yes. Yeah. So here, I'll put it on so everyone can see it. Um, and then um, Cassie and I will just kind of take turns um, going through the slides. And if anybody has a question during it too, um, you can let us know. Otherwise, the chat feature is really good too. If you want to just um, write a question in the chat, that's probably the easiest way that we can see you because um can't quite see everyone while we're presenting. So. Here we go. So welcome to the first uh, virtual kindergarten information night. <laughs> so a couple things on here. So is your child ready for kindergarten? So um, kind of a big list. I'll just kind of go through, through it really quick. Um, can they recognize um, any of the letters in the alphabet? And do they know some of the sounds? Can they write their own name? Can they count to 20? Um, can they identify the basic shapes and colors, hold a pencil the right way, use scissors to cut? Do they show an interest in books? Can they try to read a story, even if they're just um, looking at books on a daily basis? That is great too, telling their own, um, telling their own stories. Um, are they curious about learning new things? Can they listen to instructions and follow them? Um, and then a big thing is independence. They don't have to be super independent yet, but can they get their own coat on and their boots, go to the bathroom, zip up their coat? If they have shoes with ties, can they tie them? Are they able to get along with others? Are they willing to share and take turns? Um, and can they work together with others? So those are the biggest things that um, kind of tell if your child is ready for kindergarten. So let's go to the next here. Okay, so some things you can do at home, and if they're not at where we where I was just at, don't worry, they're still probably ready for kindergarten. But um, some things that you can do at home with them is just read, read, read. Um, try to identify all of the numbers, zero to 20. Um, make sure they have a consistent schedule, even if it's just a consistent bedtime routine. Do they show um, eagerness and enthusiasm for learning? And if not, um, you can kind of get them excited about those things. Try to foster independence. And then um, the biggest thing is establishing that early bedtime. And um, on, the kin or on the district's website is this sheet of paper that says you're on your way to K. And on it, um, it's for you guys to print out. It has all of kind of all those things we just went through. So a good resource for you guys at home to print out and look at. So I'll go to the next one here. So here um, is just a look um, at our day in kindergarten. So it's not funny, seriously. 
So here's a look at um, our schedule. The biggest thing that you can see in our schedule is that it's very consistent. Um, the kindergartners really like to know the routine and they like to look and see what comes next. So we keep everything pretty much the same, but it's not the same enough where they get bored. They're always moving and always learning something fun. So um, as you can see, uh, the morning here, um, our morning's a little bit shorter this year. Our lunch changed a little bit earlier, but this daily five time, that is where we are doing reading and math, or not reading or math, sorry. We're doing reading and writing. Um, and that is our um, center time. So it seems like a long chunk of time, but the kids are doing one thing for about 10 minutes at a time, getting up, moving around, um, having a mini lesson in between. So that is one of the biggest things that they love to do. Centers, centers. Do we have centers today? What are the centers today? So we have that. Um, once a week, we get an art specialist, but then we also all like to do our own art in our classroom. So um, we have a little bit, as you can see down here, the one um, to 130 times kind of changes. Sometimes we'll do social, sometimes we'll do science. Um, and we always write in our handwriting journal. So and then we have specialists, which um, we'll talk about a little bit more um, as we go on. So um, I just put this video on. Um, since I know no one is able to come into the school and see the classroom. So if you look, um, this is my class this um, last week. They are doing their daily five centers. Um, and then you can kind of see them hard at work um, and then get, to, get a feel for what the room looks like. So, and if you look closely, you'll see some kids reading books on the floor. That's usually where I am teaching a center, but I had to get up and do the quick video. But then we also each all have full-time paras in the room, which is really great because they um, run center, a uh, center too. So the kids get some really great um, teacher time in small groups. So here you go. So that's just, that's a writing center. So those are the locations. So that's where usually the kindergarten teachers would sit. It's working on different skills that they need in writing or reading. And then listen to reading on iPads. So there's kind of a look at the room and what a part of our day looks like. So we'll go on to the next slide here. Oh, there we go. All right, and then um, Cassie is gonna take over. Yeah, hi. Um, so in current kindergarten, we're doing a lot of social emotional growth and academic. Um, and so as we start off here, just know these pictures are um, from a few years ago. So we are wearing our masks and everything still in kindergarten this year. Um, but these are just some fun pictures that we had from the years before. Um, in that pink circle there, you can see that there's a bunch of different things that students learn to do this year. Um, and when your child comes in, they're going to develop positive, positive relationships with their classmates also um, their teachers. We are really looking to build those relationships and so that they feel comfortable talking to us and they're feeling comfortable coming to school every day to learn. Um, they're going to build that self-confidence and self-respect and respect for others. And that's where we learn our pause and we'll learn more about that. But pause is our behavior matrix, um, your personal best, you're acting responsibly, you're working and playing safely, and you're showing respect. And so those are the four things that we go off of in the entire Royalton Elementary but we start that off in kindergarten. And so again, just building that confidence in yourself and in others and your teachers. Um, they're gonna cooperate, negotiate with others and follow directions. A big one on there is problem solving. Kindergarten um, is a very, very crucial time that they learn how to do those problem solving skills and they work together as a team. They are gonna understand and are, appreciate our diverse um, society. And we do that with a lot of our social emotional learning and um, our daily curriculum also. Go to the next one then, Nikki. Yep. Oh, yep. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. It's a different one. 
Okay. So that's fine. Yeah. And then the academic growth, of course. Um, so this is where the students are really going to come on in and we work hard. We really do. Um, Nikki's video showed all five stations in her class um, working very, very hard. And that's all the um, guided reading centers that we do. And we're gonna learn literacy. So we start off the year and we do something called ABC Boot Camp, where we learn all the letters, letters, sounds, and then we go into our curriculum. And we're working hard. We learn um, around 80 sight words in kindergarten. And we are doing, um, they're called royal reading words. But then, um, like Nikki said also, we write in our journals every day and we're building those strong foundational skills for writing. Math every day, science, social studies, and um, that social emotional time, usually once a week, art once a week, and um, our specialists also. Our specialists, we're really fortunate that we get um, a music time, we get a gym time, um, music, and then we also have um, Spanish into that rotation. So those are the four, um, specialists that were three and then we have art but art is a class time specialist and they come in once a week um always and so we rotate those three specialists and the students not only get us as teachers they get three more actually four more bonus teachers also so it's really nice that they get to have somebody else to interact with and um, learn from so those are just a few other pictures from the years past um, and then I just want to make a quick note too. I know how Cassie said we work really hard, which we really do, but we um we do also make sure there's time for brain breaks and a lot of moving around. So they're not constantly work, work, work. We get they get to play, they get to every recess, and we do a lot of um go noodles to get them up and moving um in our transitions in our busy day. Cause I know some people ask, like, oh, is my child ready with all the sitting? Like, nope, they're not sitting as long as you might think. So they're they're busy, but we're moving. Yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, that's where that physical growth comes into play. Um, we're gonna continue to develop the small and large motor skills. So during that curriculum time um, with our guided reading centers, we're finding activities for the students to be developing those small and large motor skills, building that, um, that cooperation with others and they're not just sitting at a desk the entire time. You know, we're um, finding things for them to do that are fun, interactive, and they just have fun with. Um, we're gonna continue though to develop the independence and the self-help skills. That's a really, really big one. Um, you know, asking for help when needed and um, then, you know, working towards that help. Um, okay, I just got help now. Can I follow through with this? Can I continue? Um, you'll see in that picture on the bottom, we actually are very fortunate for those of you that um, might be new to the district. We have our very own large gym. And so we pop in and out of there as much as we can for, you know, inside recess if ever we need to. My class today, actually, we got the big parachute out for inside recess today. And we played a fun game of sharks um, and lifeguards and it was a fun time with that big parachute. So even though the weather is getting us down right now, um, we still make use of it whenever we can. And that's the same gym that they'll have um, for their gym time. So it's really nice that we get that big space to have and utilize. Yes, agreed. Um, so this is gonna look a little bit different depending on COVID and not. Um, so for orientation, we have usually Pre-COVID, we would have um, at conferences, you guys, or orient, open house, sorry, open house, you guys would sign up for a time slot and you guys would come in on the, technically the first day of school, but you would come in for these chunks. And on this time, we would um, learn about the school, learn about our kindergarten rules, um, you know, procedures. We we're going to do some fun activities that day, maybe read a story, just familiarize yourself with the school, the classroom, us as a teacher, and just make it more comfortable for the first day of school. Um, this past year, since we did have COVID, we did it a little bit differently where you signed up for a one-on-one -on -one time, almost like a conference. And the child and um, one parent were able to come on in, bring all their stuff in. We gave them, um, the teachers um, gave the parents a quick little spiel about, you know, what's the most important stuff. And then we sent you home with some of the rest of the information. So we're just, you know, working as we go, but um, it was easy to find a quick solution this year and still get the kiddos in. Um, Cause again, we just want them to ease on into the school and just have it stress-free as possible. So that's something that is something to look out for is that orientation day. Our first day is not the same as um, in the actual elementary. So that's something that um, just to look out for.
that it? Nope, there should be uh -huh. one more okay. change for you, Cassie. Can you yep. see it, Cassie? Okay. Yep, now I can. Yep. I don't know. It just might have been sold. That's okay. Um, so these are just some of the frequently asked questions that we always talk about. Um, so Mrs. Seguin um, also talked about how we have a full time paraprofessional in our classroom. So each kindergarten teacher is um, gifted, honestly, with a paraprofessional in each classroom. So they are in full time working with us, working with the students, and it's just a great addition to our classroom. They fully see the other um, person in the room as another teacher, and it helps tremendously. So we are very, very grateful that they are in the classroom. Students also get a one-to-one -one iPad. And so we use these iPads in our centers for listen to reading. We um, take pictures of our journals. Um, well, um, a lot of us do, and other work that we do, we record stories on them. And those are posted to, as you can see, Seesaw. Seesaw is the communication tool that we use in kindergarten and a lot of um, other grades use it as well, but that is what we mainly use um, for communication. You can check out all of your students' work on there that they posted, and it's just a great little tool to have and to look back on, honestly. Um, we'll keep in touch that way and send out reminders. So it's a great thing that um, we're able to have too. Each student will have a mm -hmm. cubby area and that will hold all of their essential items, which is a big backpack you'll see on there. They have a lot of stuff coming in, their winter gear, um, they bring folders back and forth every day. And um, it's just an important thing that they have a big backpack that can fit all those things. Um, it's not fun, trust me, trying to shove stuff into a backpack at the end of the day and it doesn't fit, it, it's really tough. Um, Nikki also, or sorry, Miss Seguin yeah. was also talking about shoes. If your child is not able to tie shoes, we highly suggest Velcro. Um, us as kindergarten teachers, we don't always have time to tie every kid's shoes every you know half an hour. And so we suggest those Velcro shoes, they work the best. Lunch numbers, if you already are attending preschool, it's gonna be the same number. Um, but if not, you'll get your own personal lunch number that'll stick with you through your whole time at Royalton. And we practice that at the beginning of the year too. Um, MAP is a service that um, they, I believe will be talked about in a little bit, but we do offer that at kindergarten um, before and after school. It just looks a little different because we're in a different building, but that is something that we do offer at the Early Childhood Center. Breakfast is served daily and it's free for all students. So if you eat breakfast at home, great. If not, it's available to you. And then snack. Children bring their own snack um, in kindergarten and something that is different than at the elementary. Um, milk is free for kindergarten snack. At the elementary, you're usually having milk tickets, but that is not in the kindergarten. Um, so milk is free for the kindergartners and yeah, bring your own snack. And um, I know it's so cute, the kids try and share, but we can't share. So just know that um, just bringing your own snack every day is important because they do get hungry at the end of the day there. Very hungry. Yeah. All right. And then the last, this is our last one. Yeah, so here we just have some quotes from kindergarten. And, um, we wanted to kind of give you guys something that proves, you know, we don't just think it's fun. They also do too. Um, so, you know, it is fun. It's fun to be in the school and learn to play. Everyone likes meeting new friends. This school is so fun. We have a nice teacher. We do art and get to paint pictures. People make us happy and say compliments and kids are nice. So just the few things that um, we have here at Royalton that makes our community really special and unique. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all we have. For Very you good. Thank you for sharing. Are there any questions for the kindergarten teachers? And if anybody does have a question, we can um, check in the chat too. So we can answer anything in there that you might have, unless you had a question right now. We can try to take, take it, but... Yeah, and uh, you can always ask your questions later or send us an email to the kindergarten teachers or us at the office. And uh, thank you both to Nikki and Cassie for working on getting those uh, slides, pictures, even a video yeah. together. Yeah. So we enjoyed seeing sorry that. About, sorry about my middle kid again, <laughs> <laughs> but that's real life, I guess. Yeah. Real life learning. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, if there isn't anything, we will move on. And our next presenter is our school nurse, Robin Nyreen. 
Robin has also started fairly new, so let's uh, help her feel comfortable. Robin, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Um, can you hear me okay? Try to speak a little louder. Okay. Um, so my name is Robin. I'm one of the school nurses here at Royalton. Um, I'm the LPN here, and we also do have an RN. Um, she's actually watching tonight. Um, her name is Marky. Um, I'm just going to touch base on a few things um, from the nursing standpoint. Um, first off, if your student's going to be out ill, we ask that you contact the school secretary for attendance. Um, each day your student will be out. Um, if there's any questions regarding symptoms or anything that we need to do, especially with COVID right now related, um, one of the nurses may call you for clarification. Um, and anything that's communicable disease should be reported to the nurse as well. <laughs> um, if your student has any of the following symptoms, they should be kept home from school um, at least 24 hours until symptoms have resolved. Um, and if any of these symptoms appear while your student is in school, we ask that you pick your student up from school. Um, the symptoms are if you have a temperature over 100, vomiting, diarrhea, sore or reddened eyes, suspicious rash, sore throat with a fever, cough with a fever. Um, and then on the district website, there is a more detailed list. Um, if you go under um, the little black header that says departments, you'll find health services. And there's a list on there if your student is healthy enough to come to school. Um, if there's any need for physical education exceptions, a physician note is required, um, and that should include a list of activities that the student may or may not participate in. And then when your student is allowed to participate again, another statement is needed from the doctor. If your student requires any medication during the day, um, during school hours, um, there's some legal paperwork that has to be on file before any medication can be given. Um, it would be medication can only be given if there's a written order from a physician. The form can be found on the website or it can be faxed to the school from the clinic. Um, medication can be administered um, at school, it has to be brought in by a parent or legal guardian, not the student. Um, and it has to come in the original container. And medication can only be given with the written authorization of a parent or legal guardian. So we have to have a signed note saying you give permission to give medication to a student. If any of this is not met, we are unable to administer medication in the school by law. Um, and then the last thing I have is just um, immunizations. So our school follows the immunization laws of Minnesota. So these laws state that in order for a child to enroll in early education programs or school, a parent or guardian must show that they have received immunizations or there's a notarized exemption form that must be present prior to the first day of school. So a student cannot come to school without these on file. Um, and all those forms are also located on the district website um, for reference. And if you have any questions or concerns, um, we're kind of in this fluid with COVID right now, um, um, but you can feel free to reach out to us. Um, all of our contact information is on the school website um, under the staff directory. You can find myself or Marquis, our name and email address and our phone numbers are all listed on there for if you have any specific questions. That's all I got. Anybody have any questions? Let's move on then to our transportation supervisor, uh, Gaylene Watuki. Hey everyone. Um, yes, my name is Gaylene and I'm the transportation director here at Royalton. And if you plan on using our busing system for transporting your student next year, there's a couple things you'll need to do prior to the beginning of the school year. One is online registration. This will be available on the school website beginning mid-July. It should be open for registration and every student is required to register each year if they're going to ride the bus. Um, 
right now we are implementing some new technology on our buses and to you. One of the things that is available already now to you is the Ride 360 app. By downloading this app, it will, it'll, will allow you to see your students' um, bus, current bus information. So the pickup and drop off location, the pickup and drop off times, um, bus number and driver name. So it's a really nice app and you can send messages and, and communicate with me through that. And also if there's any delays or anything, I can use that to communicate back to you. Um, in addition to the Ride360 app, we will be uh, assigning RF, RFID cards to each student with a lanyard. These cards, students will need to use these cards to get on and off the bus. There's gonna be a scanner on the bus that they will scan on and off. With this, it'll just help assist in student management for many, many years to come. So that's all I have. Any questions or comments for Gillian? Uh, she really does a nice job with transportation and it's been a very challenging year, but she's actually been able to find drivers. So we've been able to add some drivers and get the routes going again. And uh, she's stayed with it and it works really well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and then Bill, George, thing, okay, go ahead. One thing just to add um, for transportation and any sort of pickup things like that, remembering um, if you were in preschool, it might be the, exactly the same, but please have um, a note written with um, the child's name, usually the teacher and also the date. Um, and so that helps us if we're ever gone and if we need to ever communicate with Gaylene, so. Yes, thank you for that. Because it, just because you notify me doesn't necessarily mean that you as the teachers get that information over to you. Correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. And now we have uh, Jordan Wetterland, who's our school social worker. Jordan, are you there? Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Well, we will move on then to our special education lead teacher and representative of special ed, Joan Nichols. Hi, I'm Joan um, Nichols. I've been at Royalton um, for not quite as long as Phil, but um, over 23 years. So um, have been doing special ed that entire time, um, seen lots of kids come and go. Um, but as far as kindergarten wise, um, I also work with Michelle Polzine. Um, she's gonna say hi here in a minute. Um, we work closely together. She's got questions. Um, she typically is over at the building where the kindergarten and the early childhood are at. Um, I'm typically at the other building. Um, so if there's ever a concern with a child, if, you're, if they're having learning concerns, um, Michelle would be the one, classroom teacher would be the first contact, of course, um, and then Michelle would jump in and help as well, and then I can support as well. So I'll give the floor over to Michelle, and she can introduce herself. All right. Can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah, it worked. My audio wasn't working before. Uh, so I'm Michelle Posting. I do the special ed for the preschool students. And then like Joan said, um, I look over those kindergarten students as well. So yeah, I don't know what else to say. All right, everybody got a chance to see you. Thank you, Michelle. And Sherry Bishop's going to talk about the gifted and talented in enrichment program. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is my eighth year at Royalton as gifted, talented, and enrichment teacher and coach. Um, I have four children and my youngest, I'm also a parent this year um, of my youngest who will be in kindergarten. Um, the enrichment program that we have um, is a little bit different than maybe some are familiar with in other districts, but we do enrichment programming for our kindergartners. Um, we have enrichment for reading as well as math. And we've changed our platform a little bit this year and we found that it's worked really well. So that's been um, one positive thing that came out of it. So I see each classroom um, Monday through Thursday for 15 minutes and we do um, extension activities with them. 
And then we rotate between math and reading on those. And then once they get to first grade, we continue enrichment. And but we also do some extra data collecting, um, and we figure out if student um, need, students need any other um, enrichment in the years to come. So second through fifth grade, I continue um, seeing some of those students. Um, our groups are pretty fluid. Um, we do change them often, especially in kindergarten and first grade. Um, it's really based on student need. Um, during those times in learning. Um, I also do some other programming um, as the children get older, uh, math masters, word masters, spelling bee, um, a lot of those different programs are the areas that I take care of. Um, also the makerspace room, um, we have that offered at the elementary building as well. And we're hoping to have that open back up next year um, for students to participate in. Um, if you ever have any questions for me, um, you can look under the academics tab on the website um, that gives any contact information, my email, uh, phone number, and some of our programs are listed in that area as well. Okay, thank you, Sherry. Any questions for Sherry? Again, we're very fortunate to have Sherry with us, and it's just really some excellent programming for children with um, special or unique capabilities. And uh, Carrie Rowling, which I skipped over, but not forgotten, uh, is our Title I coordinator. So she's gonna talk about Title I services. Hi there, um, Carrie Rowling here. Um, so I manage the Title I program and Title I is a federally funded program that supports students who need extra help in reading and math. And our goal for Title I is to get every student at the grade level competent competency in reading and math. Um, we start working with students in first grade through fifth grade. Um, eligibility for Title I is based on the student's academic needs and we use a variety of data points, teacher recommendation and classroom observations for your kindergartners in the spring of next year, um, teachers would communicate with um, the parents um, whether or not Title I would be a program that they would recommend. And then I get the names of those students. And then um, the beginning of first grade, we, we start going with that. So um, I think that pretty much covers Title I. And if anyone has any questions, you can always email me um, or right now, I guess works too. All right, any questions for Carrie, comments? And she's, all of us are always available. Carrie's available. So either through email, leaving messages, phone calls, and uh, we'll always get back to you. And, Tammy Johannes is going to talk about our MAP program. Hi, I'm Tammy Johannes. Um, I run the MAP program, which is a before and after school program. Um, we also run a full summer program as well. Um, we start at 6.30 in the morning where you can drop your children off at the elementary school. And we close at six o'clock at night. So you have to pick your kids up by six o'clock at night. Um, if you have your kindergarten kids, they can uh, be dropped off at the elementary as well. And we transport them over to the kindergarten. And at night, uh, around four o'clock, probably 10 to four, they come back to the elementary school and we have snack at four o'clock. And we'll work on their pack rats with them and we do some story time with them. In the summertime, um, we're trying something new this year. We're gonna try to see if uh, we have a four-year-old program that is a need for our school. So if you also have a four-year-old um, that is potty trained, um, they are welcome to come to Summer Map this year. Uh, please get a hold of me uh, through you can either call me or you can send me an email um, and I'll get in touch with you on that for more information. Um, and then again, our summer program, we run from 6.30 in the morning till six at night. It's a great place to put your kids, it's safe. We have a lot of fun. We do some art, we do some educational things. Um, 
field trips. Hopefully, maybe this summer again, we'll be able to do that. Um, but yeah, it's um, in the summertime. We don't have a food program, so you'll have to send your kids with a cold lunch. But we do have microwaves, and then we try to offer them either a hot breakfast choice or um, cereal choice uh, that we make for them. Um, you have any other questions, feel free to get in contact with me. The summer program registration will be out um, about April and the school program will be available the middle of August. So if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Tammy does an amazing job with MAP and uh, a lot of families take advantage of it. So please consider MAP. In uh, kindergarten, the children are over here to be begin the morning and we bring them over to the kindergarten room to start the day. And at the end of the day, there's time when they're over there at the end of the day and uh, parent pickup over there, or we bring them back here. We typically, we bring them back here for pickup. So uh, Tammy does a wonderful job keeping it staffed. There's a lot of hours to keep the program going, but we've been running it for several years now and, and it's gone well. So it's a big bonus to our school. And then finally, uh, our PTO president, Scott Perowitz. Good evening, everyone. So I'm Scott Perowitz. Um, I am one of the parents at Railton Elementary. Um, got a son that's in fourth grade and first grade this year. Both came through the kindergarten program and they do an awesome job. So know that your kids will be in great hands. Now, parent teacher organization, what we do is there's a parent volunteers and teacher volunteers that work together to raise funds uh, help with projects that under that otherwise won't be funded. So for example, in the kindergarten rooms, there are reading chairs. Parent teacher organization helped with that. Uh, there's a virtual classroom at the main school. Uh, there are quite a few other organizations that helped with that. The parent teacher organization also helped with that. So there's a variety of programs throughout the years that we help. We try to fund things that will actually last a long time or help the entire school. But we'll also cover some of the smaller expenses or direct expenses for some of the community outreach, like when uh, we can have parents' activities, when we have cookies and things like that. Uh, we usually do the breakfast with Santa that's in December. Hopefully next year, fingers crossed, we'll be able to return to that. We all know eventually, no matter what, we will. Uh, we usually have a bingo night and we usually raise funds with a meat raffle in the springs at the Legion. Uh, this year we did a mask fundraiser. So we've done some adjustments to kind of continue being able to do what we can. But uh, feel free to uh, join up next year. You can join, you can come to a couple meetings. You can help with a single event. It doesn't need to be a huge time commitment that you're coming every month and doing a ton of work. We will take any help we can get. And if you have questions, you can email me at pto at gmail.com. We have a Facebook page you can message us. And I believe on, a, on the main district website or the elementary school website, there's a link to our Facebook page. So feel free to reach out with questions. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for all your work with the PTO and all the parents. Uh, Megan, I don't know your child's name, Megan Johnson, but she's one of the best behaved young uh, children name. I've ever seen. She has been just doing such a nice job there. So if that's an example of what's coming, that's, that's pretty good. Cassie and Nick, you'll be excited about that. So congratulations. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look like you're really fun to be around. So that's really neat. And uh, thank all the parents for participating uh, this evening. Later in the spring, we'll take a look at possibly doing another kind of event, uh, whether we can bring people in person, which I kind of questionable or another Zoom opportunity for uh, other people that maybe missed this would like more information. Thank you to all the staff for presenting and uh, taking some time this evening with us. Uh, you can tell we have a very friendly, helpful uh, group of teachers and staff who are there uh, for the best for your children and uh, for you also. Don, can you uh, give those dates again where uh, parents can turn in registration information coming up next two weeks? Yes. There she is. <laughs> February 22nd. <laughs> February 22nd. ECC. Yep. At the ECC. So we're going to set up 
right inside, not the vestibule. Apparently it's not heated in that building. So we're gonna set up right in the hallway. So Christy and I will both be there. We will be taking paperwork. If you have questions on how to fill things out, we will be there. We'll have the copier to make copies of the birth certificates. We'll be all ready to go. Thank you. We didn't get a lot of chat questions or questions otherwise. So I'll interpret that as everybody's pretty satisfied with the information you're getting. But please remember, you can always contact us. And been fun to spend the evening, not too many evening with you, not too many glitches uh, with Zoom. So I think that's a good sign. And uh, just good to be with you for an evening. You can tell we're very proud of our school. So we're eager to have you become part of our school. Please spread the word. Uh, our class sizes have averaged in the low 20s. So we think that's a, a good number and especially having the para help to support. So does anybody else have anything they want um, to say? I realized um, we forgot to mention a little bit about Tammy. Um, so Tammy Shaughnessy, Miss Shaughnessy, she's the one who's on maternity leave right now. So she actually has a kindergartner in, um, in our school right now in Miss Stevens' class. Yeah. And then she has a little girl and then she just had another little baby that's two months old. Um, so she's the other teacher. She's been teaching for, was it like 13 years, Phil? I, yep. yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, like 13 years. Um, and so she's the other teacher, um, but she is at home with her little one. So just wanted to she's give a little bit of information about her too. Thanks for sharing yeah, that. I, I, tried to, uh, I tried to do that before Austin was on me, but yeah, my son is in her class and he is loving kindergarten. So I'm uh, the boy mom kindergarten teacher and Tammy is the girl mom <laughs> kindergarten teacher. So um, we realized that. And Cassie, someday I guess we'll find out where you stand. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah, someday. I'm, yeah, just right there, but you know, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, appreciate uh, having you here. Thanks, everyone.